Welcome back to the Digital Ledger, everybody. I wanted to pull up this article and make a quick video and talk about the SDR, which is from the World Bank, uh, the IMF, International Monetary Fund. And you have to understand that the IMF and the World Bank are in conjunction with each other, right? So IMF focuses on policy. The World Bank actually focuses on the lending. So uh, this is a great article from Voima Gold, and I wanted to talk about it because this addresses some of the issues that uh, the SDR currently has in its current state. So let's take a look at some of this and just see like what some of the hurdles are for the IMF in bringing this special drawing right to a electronic special drawing right. So what is SDR and will it be the next world currency? And I can help you out right now. We will not read everything in this article. It's a very good article, but it is also quite lengthy. I'm going to try to focus on just the, the parts that are relevant for our conversation today. So there's no way the IMF special drawing rights, a poorly designed synthetic uh, reserve asset will replace the U.S. dollar as the world reserve currency. And there's a good point made here at the end, and we'll get there, but let's talk about this. So after several years of monetary madness artificially lowering interest rates to extent all asset prices are distorted, the world is slowly waking up to the fact that printing money by central banks is a one-way street. Once central banks enter this trajectory, and they have, they can't reverse. Markets have become addicted to cheap money, and the central banks feel compelled to print more when the economy or stock market weakens. The Federal Reserve, the issue of the U.S. dollar, is trapped also. Possibly a paradigm shift in the international monetary system will transpire during the coming economic downturn, and the dollar will lose its status as the world reserve currency. Now, what they're talking about here is the overall trend that we're seeing with the world going to zero and negative interest rates. We are at zero currently right now in the United States. So uh, this is very difficult to turn around from, as they just mentioned. Let's keep reading. Some analysts proclaim, proclaim the next world currency, reserve currency, is standing ready to replace the dollar. This would be the special drawing right issued by International Monetary Fund. According to my analysts, though, the SDR isn't capable of being the world reserve currency. It will never be much more than a unit of account. Now, just so you understand, there are three elements that make up a great currency, and that is the unit of account, a store of value, and a medium of exchange. So they're saying it will never be much more than a unit of account. I make an argument quite often on this channel here and on the IP channel that uh, the overall unit of account will remain the U.S. dollar, and I firmly believe that over time we will see the XRP asset placed in between everyone else's currency, as Chris Larson says, as a global supplement to trade, and we will see the store value in the medium of exchange happen through XRP. Let's keep reading. If you ask random financial expert what an SDR is, he or she is likely to say it's a currency issued by the IMF comprising a basket of world's most important currencies. Based on this definition, some analysts forecast the SDR will replace, replace the dollar, but from examining the anatomy of the SDR, it appears it's not a currency. There's no free market to exchange them, which is problematic. This is a very good point because it is a weighted basket of five major currencies of the world. And we're going to get into that in a second. But they make a very good point here that it really is problematic. There's no free market to exchange them. And it really, the better way to look at these things is like a bond issuance, like a treasury bond that's issued to the countries that are in debt and need help and need lending. And then from that, they can turn them in for a cash loan. So let's take a look at this. The SDR is a supplemental in an international reserve asset that was created by the International Monetary Fund in 1969. At first, it was def defined as 0 0.888671 grams of gold by denominating it in a fixed weight of gold. Some thought SDRs were backed by gold. Alas, SDRs were created out of thin air and then given a gold exchange rate, but they could not be redeemable for gold. 1974, after the collapse of Bretton Woods, the SDR's value was redefined based on basket of currencies. But again, the SDR was not backed by these currencies. Rather, the SDR's valuation was and is based on the weights given to the currencies in the basket. 
uh, and, 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 and let's let's uh, go down here. The SDR is not a currency because it can't be used by individuals. It's not a medium of exchange, as I expressed before. The world potential in definition of the SDR is crucial. It reveals any monetary authority holding SDR might be able to convert them into freely usable currencies of the IMF members, or it might not. How come? Uh, okay, there is no market for the SDR itself in which excess supply or demand pressure can be eliminated by adjustments in the price or value of the SDR. So right here, they're showing you the problematic situation that the SDR has. It isn't backed by anything, rather than it's just weighted and pegged to it, right? To this basket of assets and as it was formerly of gold. So uh, the SDR is potential claim on freely usable currencies because there is no market for the SDR and it's not a liability of the uh, IMF. The result is that possibly SDRs can exchange for actual currencies, but there is no guarantee how the SDR can function as the backbone of the international monetary system. If there is not a high liquid market for it, the answer is it can't. And I completely agree on this matter. This must be addressed if the SDR, whether it be electronic or not, has to remedy these problems. From the short introduction, we see that the SDR is essentially a unit of account. In the remainder of this article, we deliver into the anatomy of the SDR how it's traded and the likelihood of replacing the dollar, which I feel is very, very low in this situation because there is a very big hindrance here on this on this whole hinging question. Can it replace the global reserve currency, the US dollar? Now. I think it is problematic, and we're going to talk about why here in a second. The SDR is supplementary international reserve asset. SDRs can't be held by private entities or individuals, but only IMF member countries, and currently 15 organizations approved by the IMF prescribed holders. Let's start with a brief introduction of the IMF's governing structure as a backdrop to understand SDRs are created and used. We'll start with the IMF's general department. So here is a layout of that general department here, right? And then you see the special disbursement account, investment account, concession lending, debt relief trust. And this is basically what it is. And they issue these to countries that are normally speaking SDR allocations from the SDR department here. So these are normally issued to countries that are failing. And in years past, the, the general rule of thumb here is that it has been smaller countries. And as an example, it's normally been countries that where the government is not really uh, a very strong government. There's a lot of turmoil between two different governments trying to take each other over. The dollar is very weak in those countries, if at all, and they come in and they lend to these countries. And this poses the larger question and the larger narrative here. Let's keep going. So that's a diagram for lending. I want to get down here to a, another section here. Um, one second here. Okay, let's start here. How is the SDR value and SDR interest rate determined? The exchange rate of the SDR set daily is based on weights of currencies comprising the SDR basket. Currently down here, we see what the basket is as of 2020, which is the Chinese yuan, euro, Japanese yen, UK pound, and the US dollar. You can see the US dollar is weighted at 41.73%, followed by the euro at 30.93. The Chinese yuan at 10.3%. 10.92% and then the remainder of 8.3 and 8.0 by the Japanese yen and UK pound. So as we move through this, you can see how the weighting thing goes. I want to see, okay, I wanted to highlight this part here too. The SDR is revised every five years. The most recent revision of the SDR basket was in 2015. And it says when the Chi Chinese renminbi was added after the revision uh, in October 2016, the new currency weights were set and the exchange rates between the currencies that prompted currency amount for each of them. The latter displayed in the third column in the table above can see the as a multiplying factor as the SDR. So, okay, let's go. I want to keep this moving because I don't want to have to read this entire thing to you because I want to get down to the point where we talk about what is happening here. So the SDR interest rate is set weekly and based on a three-month interest rate benchmark of five currencies and the respective weights of the SDR. U.S. dollar, three-month U.S. Treasury bill, a three-month rate for the euro and above published European Central Bank, uh, let's see, which is now led by Christine Lagarde. 
uh, Chinese renminbi benchmark yield for treasury bonds here, which I think they actually meant to write Chinese yuan because the Chinese yuan is what's actually in the basket, as I understand it, not the renminbi. Uh, let's see, how are SDRs traded? And, and it talks about that, but that's not what I want to get to here. What I want to get to is other deficiencies here. Okay, and I'm pretty sure we're getting close to that. So let me get this. According to my analysis, the SDR will never be the, be the main international reserve asset. Not in its current form, nor in any future form, it says. Now, we'll have to see about that. One of its deficiencies that I haven't addressed extensively is the essence of the SDR has changed regularly uh, since 1969. First, it was a book entry defining weight, gold weight. In 74, it was redefined as a basket of 16 currencies, and the SDR interest rate set semi-annually about half the level of the combined market interest rate that was defined as a weighted average of the interest rates on short-term market instruments from France, Germany, Japan, and the United Kingdom and the United States. In 1981, the basket was altered uh, to five currencies, and the SDR interest rate was made equal to market rates in 2000. The basket was brought down to four currencies, and new selection of criteria were adopted in 2015 the last significant change was made and they added the chinese yuan i keep saying remember but i'm pretty sure it was the yuan but who knows what the sdr will be in the future now here's where we get into it because they start making a good point down here with the scholars have written Another core deficiency of the SDR was addressed by former Chief Financial Studies Division of the IMF Research Department, Eswar Prasad, uh, the dollar trap. In principle, SDRs can be changed for free, freely usable currencies, but cannot be used directly in private transactions. Thus, increasing the stock of SDR does not increase the total liquidity of the global monetary system. That's an enormous problem right there. You need liquidity, and the SDR in its current state and form of function does not do that because SDRs are not backed by anything and are not a medium of exchange. Creating SDRs does not create, here it is, say it right here, total, does not create more total liquidity of the global monetary system. Now, what is the true value of the SDRs as they are not backed by currency and is not market, no market exchange to them? The reality is the SDRs true value derives from the commitments of the members to exchange SDRs, freely usable currencies. Consequently, when members aren't committed to exchange SDRs, its true value drops to zero. Surely, a fictional exchange rate will continue to be published, serve as a unit of account, but its true exchange rate would be zero. And that is a very, very, very bring it home point right there. It's very, very bring it home point right there. Okay, so now, here's the other point that is in here as well. Um, a securely controlled base of, for world monetary reserves to continue, a more comprehensive SDR system would represent a substantial step towards a world central bank. I agree maybe the SDR can succeed if its essence is changed once again. The world would fully financially integrate and all countries would be subordinate to one world central bank that could control all of its members monetary policy there's a problem we're approaching here listen to this as we go forward but that's not going to happen first it makes no sense second the current trend is financial disintegrate disintegration uh look at brexit and the trade war between china and the u.s are we really to believe that the world will submit under a new global central bank that will issue a sdr in all nations will surrender their monetary sovereignty. I don't think so. And there it is right there. I don't think so. That's why up until now, the SDR has been something that has been called on and used by failing countries that can barely have a government that can shore up and let alone su support its people. Uh, this is the problem. If you adopt the SDR and you take on the SDR, you really run the risk of having to sacrifice and surrender all your nation's uh, monetary sovereignty. Not a good idea. Okay, so look, that's where I'm going to stop it right there. This is a fantastic article by Voima Gold, and there's a lot more in here that you could take out of this, but this is what I wanted to really address today. There's a lot of talk about the electronic SDR, and I think that we're going to see something new introduced by the IMF when it comes to the SDR 
but what will it be and how will they conquer the challenges that are laid out in this article that we've discussed numerous of times on the other channel, the IP channel? You know, this is not a small matter. If they intend on the SDR to be a medium of exchange, they have to figure out a way to not challenge nation's monetary sovereignty as they do so. All right, guys, hit the like and subscribe. Make sure if you like this content to please share this with anybody you think is interested in this same material and understanding how this affects monetary policy and crypto and digital assets as we move forward. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for tuning in.